If you want to make more money as a web designer, and you want to stand out in a way that will definitely get you remembered by your clients, especially if you're competing against other web designers for the same projects, try this out. It's a data-driven approach to onboarding clients. And every client that we've taken on for at least the last seven years or so, we have used this technique in the onboarding process. Now, it's not new, like I didn't invent this. People do this in other industries all the time. I just don't hear a lot about it in web design. So let's touch on all three steps of the process. It's a three-step process. We'll go through all three steps right now. But let's also take a look at the surprising benefits that come from this that aren't immediately obvious just because of making this data-driven shift. You know, stuff like the value of the project, the workflow of the project, even client retention and recurring revenue, all are kind of surprising benefits for making the shift. So let's take a look at how it looks. So three steps. First step is the very first thing that I like to do is establish the purpose of the project. And for me, the purpose is not to deliver a website that makes the client feel happy. Like, of course I want them to feel happy. And if they didn't feel happy, that would be a disqualifying aspect of working with me. But I don't wanna just offer something that's just bare minimum requirements. I want the purpose of the, of the project to be to drive business results for the client. So what I'm talking about is drive more traffic, pull more leads, convert more of those leads into clients and ultimately generate more revenue. And that's what makes me excited. I want my client to be excited about that too. I wanna to be on the same page with that. And that is the purpose of the project, not just to get a website that people feel happy about, but actually to get results. So right off the bat, I make it crystal clear that my intent, the purpose of me taking this project on, if I accept it, is because I wanna drive results. Now, having said that, I also like to show clients how I'm going to drive the results. So I usually have some kind of a slide presentation, whatever, Google Slides or whatever, and I'll talk the client through like the narrative, the story of the customer journey we're gonna be creating for the client. And by customer journey, what I sort of mean in a more technical sense is we're building out a funnel for them and I want them to see how the funnel works. But I'll show them like, why are they gonna get more traffic? And how are we going to pull more leads from that traffic? And once we have the leads, how are we gonna get those leads to convert into paying clients? And so I'll just kind of walk them through a slide presentation showing that exact, that, that exact customer journey for them. And so now from right at the very beginning, we're not thinking about graphic design details that make the client feel happy about the look of their website. Everybody is focused on why are we doing this? And we're doing it because we're driving more traffic, pulling more leads, converting more clients, and basically driving more revenue into the business. And boom, that is step one. We've now established the purpose. But it's not just enough to just talk about traffic leads and clients. Step two, I wanna put numbers on it. So I wanna put like target metrics that we're actually shooting for. And this is where it gets really exciting and totally different from what almost all of the other web designers I know of are doing. So step two is like, ideally what I'd like to do is be able to have access to the statistics that the clients already have, like their web stats, and see, well, how much traffic are they already getting? And what's the opt-in rate on their lead magnet? And how many people are actually booking calls? And try to see, well, how much better can I do than what's happening right now? Because I have some gold standard metrics that I like to shoot for, and I want to know like, how, does, how does what I think I can do compared to what they're actually doing? Because if you can show that, that's huge. But a lot of times, people don't know. Like, they don't have stats. Maybe they don't even have a website yet. So it sometimes can be really, I would say even most, I would say 90 plus percent of the time, I don't have access to the stats or, or the, they don't have the website at all or whatever. And so I got to go kind of on my own. And so like I know, so almost all of our clients are in health and wellness, like functional medicine doctors, chiropractors, nutritionists, stuff like that. And so the numbers I'm about to share with you are my gold standard numbers for people in the health and wellness sector. So if you're in a different sector um, or a different industry or a different niche, the numbers might shift a little bit. It's like part of what we do in DoubleStack, like if you wanted to be part of our mentoring program, um, we could look at your niche and figure out what the numbers are for you. But for me, here's how it all works out. My, and these are my gold standard numbers and they're hard to reach, but these are at least what I'm shooting for. And there's three of them. The first nu number that I'm looking for is, what is the email opt-in rate for the lead magnet? So like if I'm driving traffic, what's the percentage chance that the traffic is actually going to turn into leads by way of signing up for the email list? And the reason that that's my first metric is because, especially in my industry with health and wellness, and most of these doctors are a little bit outside of the mainstream, and so it's very rare for like somebody to hit the website for the first time and immediately book a call and start working with the doctor. There's an educational process or a lead nurturing process that goes into it almost all the time because people wanna know, hey, what is this thing all about? Is this gonna work for me? Like, is this something that I wanna do? There's like this, this kind of like, 
this lead nurturing cycle that needs to go into it. So like my primary objective is to help my client build their email list so they can nurture the leads so that when they actually do book the calls, almost all of those calls turn into clients. So the first metric I'm looking for is what's the email opt-in rate for the lead magnet, and I'm shooting for between 15 to 20%. So ideally, it's like a one in five thing. So five people come in, one person signs up for the lead magnet. So that's, that's hard, it's, 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 that's, that's, a, that's a challenge to get there, but it can be done, and that's, my, that's what I'm shooting for. Number two is what's the percentage chance that the lead is actually going to book a call? So like what's the conversion rate from leads to calls? And I want that to be somewhere around five to 10%. So if you join the email list, I want five to 10% of the people on the list to eventually book a call. So from the top, it's like 20% opt into the email list, 10% of those people are booking calls. And then the third number that I'm looking for is when they do land a client, what is the value, the 12 month value of that client? And I want it to be at least $1,000. Now, one of our clients has a concierge medicine practice where you subscribe to their practice and it's $4,000 per year per person. So like, that's a lot more than this, but as a bare minimum, what I'm looking for is $1,000 per year per client. And that's the, that's the goal. So now if you know those three numbers, then you can actually do some really cool math where you can say, okay, well, if 100 people come into the website, that means I'm gonna get 20 people on my email list. And from the 20 people on my email list, that means I'm gonna be booking two clients as a 10% conversion rate from leads to clients. Now it's hard to do that, but what if you could get at least halfway there? What if instead of two clients, you could book one client? So now you know that if you could drive 100 leads or 100 visitors, that it would kind of go through your whole funnel and you'd end up with one client. So then you think, okay, well, 100 visitors means $1,000 because the client's worth $1,000. And now look at what you know. It's like, you could say, okay, what if I want to have a 4X return on my investment? That would mean that I could take the $1,000 that I think I'm going to get, divide that by four, and now I'm at $250. So I've got $250 of budget to drive 100 visitors knowing what these metrics are, right? So now I know I can pay $2.50 per click. Assuming all of the traffic comes from paid traffic. Now, if you're getting organic traffic, you might even be able to pay a little bit more per click because you don't have to get quite as many paid leads coming or paid visitors coming in because some people are coming in for organic. But just pushing organic aside for a second, if all of the traffic that you're driving is coming from paid sources, you know the cost per click. Like who else knows that? Nobody knows that. Like if I guarantee you that almost all of the other web designers that are competing for the same projects that you're competing are not even thinking about this, much less actually showing the client how it's going to work. And then you can say, okay, well, how many leads do you want? Would you like an extra one lead per week? You know, would you like a lead per day? It's like, well, how many could you take on and, and with regard to your capacity? And then you can say, okay, well, here's the ad spin we need to drive the number of, of visitors so that we can actually get those calls coming in. And you've got actual target metrics, like real numbers to use. That's huge. That is, that is a huge thing and it gets people very excited. And this is where you really begin to stand out in a radically different way from everybody else who's talking about fonts and colors and design things. But there's a third step. Now the third step is the optimization process because there's a lot, of, there's a lot that kind of goes into hitting those target metrics. It's hard to hit those target metrics. Those are, those are big numbers. So there's like, as you're building out the homepage and the different landing pages for the site, there's different chunks of content that you create. Like for example, obviously the headline. And like the headline is the biggest thing. It's like if, if, if you go and you look at your web stats and you see that a lot of people are bouncing really quickly off the page, the problem is probably the headline, right? Because that's probably what they're looking at the headline and they're bouncing. It's not the stuff further down the page. It's, it's not the lead magnet or the call to action. They probably haven't seen that stuff yet because they haven't spent enough time on the site. So you know, okay, well, if I have a really, really fast bounce rate, I probably need to change the headline. Or maybe there's an audience qualification copy, which is usually it's like headline, audience qualification copy, where you're telling people who this is for and what they're gonna get and how all that stuff works. So you're kind of pushing people, intentionally pushing people away that are not the right fit, pulling people in who are the right fit. And then you've got like a quick summary of what the offer actually is. And then you usually have a little like about us or about me section about the doctor. And then there's some social proof. And then you've got the, your lead magnet and all that stuff. So there's all these different components to the page and so what we, what you want to do is like, we'll set that stuff up. And like, I've been done this, I've been doing this for a long time, like 20 years or whatever. And so I kind of have a sense for what's going to work. So I try to do the best stuff first, obviously, but if I'm looking at it, like it's, it's like, I can't hit holes in one on every single shot. And so like, I'll look at the, look at what's going on on the page and try to like change one variable at a time, then run more traffic across. Basically I'm AB testing these various components of the page 
based on what, what the data show. And so that's a huge thing. Cause, and you're saying I had this optimization process for how this works. So like if this really fast bounce rate, then we're gonna try changing the headline. If people are staying on the page, but they're not opting into the lead magnet, maybe the lead magnet's not the right thing. Or maybe even, maybe it's just the title of the lead magnet's not the right thing. So we'll change that out and then run some more data and see how things go. And so like you've got this process where you're kind of dialing things in and that's huge. So those are the three steps. You've got the purpose, you've got the stats, and then you've got the process. Now here's some of the surprising benefits that come from that. Cause like, suppose you have a client that's like, Hey, can you, can you like give me access to the website? It's like, no, I can't give you access to the website. We've got this process here. Like, but it, because like, if you, if I give my client access to the website to start making willy nilly changes, it's going to mess this up. But instead of telling them no and trying to like disrupt the relationship in some sort of adversary way, I'll, I'll actually say, if you change stuff and we don't know about it, you're going to you're, you're self-sabotaging your system. Like you're, you're going to change stuff. And I don't know why the, why the change happened or, or what impact that has on the data. So let's not change things based on our feelings. Let's change things based on the data. So right off the bat, like if you have clients that want access to the site or want to make their own changes, because like I hate it when clients make their own changes to the website because they're, they're not web designers. They don't know what to do. It always is a downgrade. But a lot of times when people do that, like if you find yourself with clients that constantly want change requests, almost all of the time it's, it's like a fear-based or anxiety-based sort of a thing where they're like, I don't know if this is gonna work. I don't know if I told you to do all the right stuff. And like, once I pay you, then you're gonna be gone. I won't be able to get any changes from it. So like, can you make these changes? And then, then they change their mind back and forth. It just takes forever. And you have these projects that get stretched out forever. But with this new approach, you don't have that problem because thing number one is you can say people, tell people, hey, I don't want to change things just on feelings. We want to look at the data and see how it works. We have this optimization process that we're following and that alone usually eliminates all of these problems anyway in terms of change requests. But like if it doesn't, you can actually say something that's like tactful and polite as to why they don't, why you're not going to give them access to change the site or whatever. But usually it doesn't really get it even get to that because people are like, they don't have the anxiety that you're going to abandon them. And so you can say, hey, we're going to try this stuff out. And if it's not working at the level that we want, we're going to make some changes. So I'm always going to be here to support you. So not only do you have a situation where you don't have to like give clients access to the site, you also can launch the site faster because people are like, well, it sounds like let's, let's go ahead and start running some data, see what happens, run some traffic, get some data. And then they don't have this anxiety that you're going to abandon them. And that means you've got, they're keeping you on a retainer. So you have recurring revenue baked into the mix. That's awesome too, right? It's so like all of this stuff is dialing in into a situation where you've got high ticket clients, long-term relationships, recurring revenue. They're not meddling around with the work that you're doing. It's, it's like you can launch the sites faster. People make more de can make decisions faster because they know that you can easily change them if they're not working. It's like a ton of really great benefits from this data-driven approach to onboarding clients. And you start it from the very beginning. And so it's, it's just a huge shift. I'm not seeing a lot of people doing it in web design. And if you want to give it a try, you know, drop a note in the comments and, and let me know. Or if you want to work together on it, jump over to doublestack.net slash call. And we can hop on a call. We can talk about more detail about how this works and maybe see if the mentoring program is right for you. But even if it's not, we could at least hop on a call, talk about how this works. And maybe you could start implementing data-driven client onboarding or data-driven acquisition into your business. If not, <laughs> check out this next video and see what you think.